Well, Parliament is just about um, uh, returning from its recess. This bill uh, was before Parliament, before they went on recess, one of the most controversial ones. Uh, in the beginning stages when this bill was first put in the public domain, there was pretty little opposition to it. Uh, I recall doing several shows on this and it was hard to find somebody who was going to contradict the position of those who were sponsoring the bill, uh, barring to say that we also had, for example, the only group that we recognized uh, that was in opposition to this was the uh, Amnesty International. Well, fast forward a few, a few months and of course that the position has grown. Very prominent uh, individuals uh, in our land have of course now made it clear why they stand in opposition to the bill and written to Parliament on this. I want to quickly go through this very quickly because I want to sit down and have a conversation um, on this from the point of view of those who are opposed to the bill. What really is some of the issues that they are talking about? The, a few things that they've put forward, nine groups. But there are a, a series of individuals uh, who have uh, raised several issues uh, with this. Uh, according to the, to the group's justifications given by the bill sponsors, and that's not past the high bar set for uh, any law that seeks to uh, interfere with rights guaranteed and deemed fundamental in the Constitution. So this is a, for them, it's, it's a rights issue, uh, fundamentally. And the list of, it, it led to this, a few of the fundamental human rights under the Constitution that is, this, they believe this violates. The group believes that the, the public health justification often given for the, uh, this, the discrimination is simply uh, spurious. They, are, they argue the criminalization of any particular form of sex and a public health grant has been shown uh, to be counterproductive. Now, they are the cultural values justification we've seen uh, in the sponsors of this particular bill. Uh, they talk about the group has stated that Ghanaian cultural norms and practices, no matter how widely shared, as subject to the constitution and some of the cultural values itself as we know has been discriminatory and in some cases actually uh, encourages uh, crime we've seen for example in some cultures they point out that uh, twins and babies are encouraged to be sacrificed and they, they, they point to that so not all cultural values uh, are, are agree with the law and with the constitution they touch on that very firmly and there is uh, a few other issues. We've seen that the group say that the bill does not directly explain how same-sex relationship or LGBTQ practices endanger family life, for example, has been a key thing that has come up. Uh, they say they, if you look at the bill versus the SDGs, it's come up quite strongly uh, that the bill is against SDG 3, ensuring uh, healthy lives and well-being uh, for all. They pull that up uh, as a, one of the strong uh, issues to note. Now, they are arguing government to reject the proposed family values bill. According to them, the bill seeks to establish a system of state-sponsored discrimination and violence against the LGBTQ community. Now, I'm going to sit down now uh, with a, a key voice in the space when it comes to some of the key issues raised in opposition to the bill. Um, he is a renowned uh, lawyer, uh, a man I've wanted to interview for, for years indeed, but of course, uh, he, he, he was one of those, in fact, he was a, a key voice in a press conference yesterday articulating uh, the contents of their memorandum before Parliament. Uh, you want to stay with me uh, as, we, as we have this conversation. You've heard the other side. You've heard those sponsoring this bill on the show. Let's get to grips with why there is opposition to something that many say is supported by the overwhelming majority of Ghanaians. So you want to stay with me. Very fascinating conversation, I promise you will ensue here on PM Express. Hello, my name is Evans Mensa, and you can relive all the fun and excitement on Top Story, News Night, and of course, Ghana Connect via podcast. All you need to do is to log on to my Joy Online slash podcast. Set for your favorite show and relive the moment. Joy 99.7 FM, your radio for discerning listeners. And thank you very much for uh, staying with us here on PM Express. And I'm pretty sure you may have followed the uh, press conference yesterday that was addressed uh, by uh, a, a coalition, indeed. Uh, this is a coalition of citizens concerned about imminent threat to democracy and human rights. And they uh, held a press conference yesterday uh, with some really strong um, membership, uh, I must say. I'm delighted to say that I've been joined by one, of course, he uh, spoke at the press conference yesterday um, and he's in the studio with me. He's, uh, he's a lawyer, he's a member of that coalition. He's lawyer Koto Ampao, 
um, and he's in the studio with me. If you're wondering, ah, where do I know him? Yes, of course, he was um, the lead counsel for the president of the just uh, the 2020 20 election petition. So that's where you saw him. But he's here in the capacity, simply as a lawyer and uh, a member of the coalition uh, that held the press conference yesterday. Mr. Kutompa, thank you very much for joining us on PM Express. Thank you for having me. So I read your statement, um, which was read to the press yesterday, in which you say you're asking Parliament to, quote, reject this dangerous bill. Yep. What is dangerous about a bill to fundamentally have law and act generally abhorred by the majority of Ghanaian society? Um, what is dangerous about this bill is that one single bill mm. somehow manages to breach almost all the fundamental human rights guaranteed mm. under the Constitution. Let's for the moment assume that they do, the bill does not contravene, it's not, does not violate, but it is a breach. You know, it seeks to limit almost all the fundamental uh, rights in our Constitution. And you need to ask yourself, what exactly is the public policy justification for a bill that has this character? Which right specifically are you referring to? Talking about the right to freedom of expression, the right to assemble, the right to organize and associate, the right to freedom from discrimination, the right not to be treated in an inhuman and degrading fashion, the right of privacy, and um, yeah, so Let, let, let's, take, let's take a few of them one after the other. Just a few of the top ones. Since you're talking about media, and, and let's start with the first one you mentioned, yep. freedom of expression. Yes. How does this bill do that? No, first of all, let me make a, a point, because I know people have been saying that. We are not saying that the rights guaranteed under the Constitution are absolute. We are very much aware of the fact that they are not absolute. They are subject to limitations that are reasonably necessary for the protection of the rights of others, for the protection of public safety, public health, public um, and public interest generally. You know. So that is not our position. And people cannot counter our argument by telling us that, oh, but the Constitution doesn't say that all rights are absolute, because that's not what we are saying. But gay and lesbian rights should be one of those ones that yes. but for come you, under those limitations. For you to, first of all, restrict that right to be, to be who you are, you must show that it is, your restriction is necessary for the protection of the public interest. And even when you show that it is necessary, you must show that the restriction is reasonable and proportionate to the harm you propose to prevent. You know. So, for instance, that's a simple example. If you are an intersect, an intersect, they themselves defined it as an intersect. If you are an intersect, it means that you are a person who has neither a male or female uh, anatomical, you know, genital uh, properties. That's what it means. So the person is neither male nor female in terms of his genitals. Now, so if the person holds himself out, because that's in the law, the bill, that if you hold yourself out as an intersect, you've committed an offense. If you say, if you hold yourself out as a, a questioning, that's another of the phrases, which means that you are questioning your, what exactly is your right identity, sexual identity orientation. If you hold yourself out as that, you have committed a crime. 
if you hold yourself out to the public that, oh, you are a transgender, you have committed an offense. Yeah. And it, all those things. And we are saying that what is the necessary public justification? What harm does this da do to the public interest in such a way that will bring the whole powers of the state down on it. Let, let's talk about the homosexual question, because this is at the heart of this, that a man having sex with another man, a woman having sex with another man, which is really fundamentally what, why this has become a key issue. Of course, there are various other um, definitions of some of which you've mentioned, but it boils down to, to that, which most Ghanaians are very familiar with. You've mentioned, and I want to come back to the rights because I think it's a fundamental uh, point of your, your disagreement with the bill. I wanted to take, for example, the freedom of expression, um, mm. which you mentioned. Mm. How is the bill, as it's crafted currently, mm. a violation of the right to expression? Okay, let me um, explain that. For instance, there are very, very few provisions of the Constitution that the Constitution says cannot be amended. Even the constitutional provisions, almost all of them can be changed, apart from very few of them. Now, this law is such that if it is passed, you can't amend it. If you try to amend it, you can be arrested. If you try to amend it to reduce its you know, ferocity of assault on those who are referred to as LGBTQ people, you'll be committing an offense. Which part of the bill says that? Because that if you try to amend it, you can be arrested. Because the bill says that anybody, well, anybody who says something in favor of homosexual activities has committed an offense. But that's different from a trying to amend it. No, no, no. But if so, if, 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 you start, if you start campaigning that, look, this law is too egregious in its violation of homosexuals, and therefore it ought to be toned down. You are saying, saying something in favor of... respect, that, that, that is an overkill in terms of an interpretation on what the bill is saying. The bill is simply saying, if you're promoting homosexual activities, then that in is... In any way, in yes. any way. Yeah, but, but, you, you, but that, there's a clear distinction there. You, you can't have a conversation about homosexual rights without necessarily promoting. So for example, I'll give an example in what the proponents themselves of the bill have said. Mm. You, we, we can discuss with a security expert extremism and terrorism, mm. but we cannot have an extremist on a, a television show promoting extremism and terrorism. That's yes. a distinction. That's, that's a fair enough distinction. Yes, I agree. But the point here is that this law banishes any sympathy for homosexuality. That is not true. The law simply oh. says you cannot promote. No. It doesn't say so. If you, if you care to cite to me which part of the bill says that if once you speak about homosexuality... No, that you show true. sympathy for. It's in the law. I don't have the I, law I'll be, I'll be very glad to... It is in the law. Because what, what, I, what, I, what I read in the, in, in the bill was the, the, bill. the active promotion of homosexual activity is what is... Or solidarity. Solidarity is in the bill. You go and check it. You see, one of the things about this bill is that most Ghanaians do not like homosexuality. Mm. So all they hear is that, oh, there's a, a move to ban homosexuality. Mm. And on that basis, they say, oh, yes, we support it. In fact, many among even the educated class yeah. do, have not read the bill. All they know is that this bill is to prevent homosexual activity. But the actual provisions of the bill, mm. very few people have read it. And they get, the people that have engaged, they get surprised to find out the details of the bill. So I say that if you are a mother and you have a son who is a homosexual, you may not be happy about it. Mm. But I can tell you, apart from really crazy mothers, they will just have to live with that situation. Now, this law puts a duty on that mother to report his son to the police. This is the duty under this law. Is this not extremist 
What social good does it promote for a mother to go and report his son just because of who he is? How do you justify that? But this is the same um, bill that also offers protection for those <laughs> who, who also are found to be gay. It actually encourages their protection, encourages health care for them, and, and actually prohibits harassment of those people. That is what the bill says at the tail end. But let me tell you, the whole thrust of the bill is to arouse public sentiment and to more or less validate the public hatred for homosexuals that the state itself has given the stamp of its official authority for those who think homosexuals are inhuman, they, 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 they are against everything that we stand for and should be pushed aside. Mm. So the, the provisions we talk about uh, providing uh, uh, protection and so on are hypocritical. Do, 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 do let, let me tell you, even our police, even the police, they will not be interested in that bill, in that portion of the, of the law. If the law says that homosexuals are uh, to be dealt with the way the law proposes, and people beat them, I tell you, if you go and report to the police that you are homosexual and you have been beaten, they'll just look at you, but fast or all, that's what they will tell you. I mean, so this, that provision in the scheme of the whole bill it's meaningless. But, but, but like, like, like laws generally re must reflect a people's aspiration, a society's values. That, that in essence is the foundation of a lot of the laws that we have. True or false? Uh, I will not agree with you fully. Uh, but you I'm agree? Not, why I won't agree with you fully mm. is that in Ghana now, our fundamental law that determines everything is the Constitution. And if you go to Article 39 mm. of our Constitution, particularly Article 39.2, yeah. it is Article 39.2. The state shall ensure that appropriate customer and cultural values are adapted and developed as an integral part of the growing needs of the society as a whole. Mm. And in particular, that traditional practices which are injurious to the health and well-being of the person or, the, or persons are abolished. Yes. So you see that the framers of the Constitution there were very careful in the words they used. They said adopted and what? Developed. Ad adapted, adapted and developed. And developed. It's an integral part yes. of the growing needs of the yes. society as a whole. They don't, they don't say that the states will pass laws. That's not the language. It says because it must be adopted and developed. And if you go to the next, uh, the paragraph two, mm. it says that what? And, and in particular, mm -hmm. the traditional practices which are injurious to the health and well-being of the person or the, or of the person are abolished. Yes. So you see that traditional practices that are, how do you call it, promoted by our cultural values may not be something that the constitution upholds. And Article 26, Clause 2, deals directly with that. If we can stay on this a bit, because this is a very important yes. clause in, in the yes. justification for the sponsors. Yes. Let's interrogate your yes. position on this a bit. Your constitution there, which I just quoted, says, shall ensure that appropriate customer and cultural values are adopted. Yes. In the Ghanaian society, I put it to you, that appropriate and cultural values amounts to an opposition to homosexuals. Yes. So what do you do? That's the point I'm making. If that is your... It's, it's to it's, adapt and develop and yes. make it an integral part. Yes. Uh, adapt so, and develop that, that opposition that, to, that, to that act which culturally yes. is abhorred yes. so, into law, which is essentially what no, no, no. the proponents are doing. No, that is not it. It's quite wrong. You see, because you must always read our constitution as a whole. Because Article 26.2 says that cultural practices that cause all cultural practices which dehumanize 
or are injurious to the physical and mental well-being of the person are prohibited. This is, that has no limitation. So you're saying that abhorring homosexuals, homosexuality or the practice yeah. would in, injure uh, the, the rights of no, the few? No, that's not what I'm saying. If you pass a law which says that if you are homosexual, you are a criminal, that is, you are criminalizing the person's Humanity, you are dehumanizing him because of who he is. No, but, but homosexuality is a choice, it's a sexual preference. No, it which, isn't. Which, which, law, which law guarantees a right to sexual preference in our constitution? No, I'm not saying any law guarantees But, it's, it's, to, but, to but homosexuality is a preference. I'm, it's a sexual I'm preference. I'm saying, no, it is not necessarily a sexual preference. But you acknowledge that, that necessarily, if you acknowledge it, that there are people who have made a choice to be homosexuals. My point here is the following. You see, the bill is founded on a number of foundational theories. One, that people are born either male or female at birth. Mm. That position is scientifically unfounded. It is not true. You know, maybe if we go to my village, this is the, the view that people will have in my village and in many other villages, that a person when he's born, he's either born as a male or born as a female. I'm saying that Ghana and its leadership, we must think beyond and provide light and enlightenment to our people. So if our people think this way, it doesn't mean that because our leaders must represent the people, if, they, if, if aspects of their thinking is wrong, our leaders will go behind the people and be led by the people. Our, our leaders are to provide enlightenment to our people. So if certain aspects of the values and thinking of our people are wrong, our leaders have the obligation to be bold enough to stand up and say, no, this is wrong. Are you suggesting that our abhorrence of homosexuality is, uh, as a cultural value, it's, it's an affront to um, people's fundamental human rights? It's, it's, it's a bad thing in itself? I'm saying that to premise a law on the position that being a homosexual is inhuman, it is, that is a very heavy thing to say. No, but, but, you, but, you, but you are, I want to read to you what the people say, because we, we have to be factual here in, in Dr. No, so, 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 you, you, you say in your, you say in your, uh, in your uh, petition to parliament, uh, you had some strong words of parliament actually, in yesterday's uh, press statement, you said, quote, you consider it unbecoming of parliament to initiate such a fanatical crusade of intolerance mm. and extremism mm. in the 21st century. Yeah. Now, parliament, I, let me put it to you, is the ultimate representation of the direct will of the people. Is all it? of us. Ultimate representation of the direct will of all of us, our citizens, right? They represent us. No, the, they, parli no, no, in, no. In, in the, parliament in, is supposed to represent the will of, of the, the people. people. Yes. yes. That, that's what I'm saying. Yes. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah, what because I'm saying. parliament sometimes does not represent. Well, but that's what they're supposed to do. Yes. Okay. Now, in this very instance, in this very case, a recent CDD survey found that 93%, 93% mm -hmm. of Ghanaians are mm -hmm. intolerant of homosexuals. Yes. The CDD concludes that this places Ghana, quote, places Ghana near the top in terms of intolerance mm. across 23 African countries surveyed between 2019. Correct. 2021. You agree Parliament must reflect the people's will. Mm. This is an act which I put to you based on the facts, reflect the will of the people. No, but that is, that is part of the problem of those who are sponsoring this, this bill. How can a majority no, of you be part of yes. overwhelming majority, only 7%? Yes. yes, yes. Because the whole idea about a democratic society is not simply doing what the majority says or wills. That is not democracy. But that is democracy. Dem no, democracy was recognizing the majority will mm. must always protect the minority rights and views and ensure that through the process of majoritarianism, you do not repress minorities. That is a very, very fundamental principle of democracy. And that is why you have safeguards in constitutions. The constitutions 
provide safeguards so that the majority cannot use their majority to invade those safeguards that protect the minority. So, it is my position and our position that this, the question of this bill is not a numbers question. It's not how many people support the bill in Ghana, then you throw up your hands. Uh, 30 million or what? 18 but, or 20 but, million. But, but that is the very opposite of what, how laws are supposed no, to be made. No, no. I mean, the whole architecture of our democracy is based on mm -mm 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 -mm. referendums and, and parliamentary votes, and mm -mm. that is how mm -mm. the architecture of the lawmaking no. process is. Yes. What Majority I, view. What I'm saying here is that that is the point I, I make that a democratic constitution has majority, majoritarianism as a principle. But because it recognizes that the majority can actually be an oppressive sector of the population in relation to the minority. It provides certain guarantees for everybody, whether you are majority or you are minority, so that you can all have at least some minimal rights. So when the majority proposes or where a bill is proposed, based on the overwhelming majority view, which then invades into the space protected by the Constitution for a minority. You can't say that because that is the minority, a majority position, it is proper and okay. But you can by. say that although the majority abhors it, we should allow that minority to exist in possible violation of the majority's rights also to exist without them? Yeah, no, no, but you see, but that's the point. The majority has no right to say that they will exist without them. They no, don't have a right but, but, because but, they are human beings. So you can't say that we, the majority, say that you, you can't exist with that in a democratic republic because the laws of our republic guarantees the humanity of every person who not only Ghanaians, mm. but every person. In fact, if you look at the rights provisions, it is, apart from, let's say, freedom of movement and so on, which are limited to Ghanaians, all the other provisions are persons. So if you go to Article 21, it says every person, not every Ghanaian, no. So the person can come from anywhere. If he is in Ghana, the Constitution protects his freedom of expression, his freedom of religion, his freedom not to be discriminated against, and so on and so forth. So I think it is very, very important that we understand that even though a democracy has a, a, an important element of majority rule, what makes a democracy democratic is that notwithstanding that, the minority rights are protected. But the law, as we speak, specifically and factually, offers protection for the minority rights of LGBTQ. He says here, the bill seeks to prohibit, I'm quoting, the abuse <laughs> or harassment of persons suspected to be LGBTQ. Additionally, in order to be appropriately deal with such claims of abuse, the bill simultaneously extends opportunities for access to medical and psychological support to affected persons to take advantage of those opportunities and to facilitate their integration into the larger society. This is the bill. It satisfies your own threshold. No, you just, you just it, it doesn't. It doesn't. This is, in, in our view, a very hypocritical you know, offer of a hand. Why do I say so? I say so because everything else in the bill is an attempt to quash out the existence of homosexuality. Because the society of horses. Uh, well, yeah, but if, uh, not, I'm mm -hmm. not worried for now about mm -hmm. the reason. But I'm saying that this, what, this provision, which says they, they should not be beaten and blah, 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 blah. It's a thing in chalk, uh, tongue statement. Because if you read the, the trust of the bill, mm -hmm. the trust of the bill actually encourages people, you know, to see them as evil. So you can't create a bill that says everything about homosexuals is evil and then expect the population to, to think that the people are not evil and ought not to be dealt with. 
That is why that provision is hypocritical. It is not meant. It is not genuine. Because every other provision is telling the ordinary Ghanaian that this thing, it's not even a, a human being, this thing should be eradicated from our society. You are opposed to the bill. Is that to suggest that you are in support of homosexuality and promotion of gay rights in Ghana? Our position as an, a group mm. is that every person who is a human being is entitled to certain basic rights. And that what the bill is doing is launching an assault on the rights of a particular group in our society. And we see that as dangerous for our democracy because if today it is homosexuals, tomorrow, God forbid, it may be Buddhist. The next day, it may be something else. And before you are aware, running on this, um, how do you call it, stream of majority, this is what the majority says, not what the Constitution is saying, you find that step by step, our freedoms are being eroded. So you have the view. And let, 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 me, let me conclude this yeah. part. You see, uh, Adolf Hitler, yeah. he came to office in, in Germany through democratic elections. So it was through the democratic path that Adolf Hitler won office. But gradually, through this idea that Jews, blah, 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 he turned German society all around. Promoting hate against other people is something that our constitution prohibits. So, and, so your position is yes. a man having sex with another man is your right? I'm saying, and we are saying, that if two consulting, consenting adults have this relationship, it is no business of society. Even if I, as a Kutampa, I may not like it. So our position has nothing to do with our personal preference or not for homosexual activities. Our position is a principal position that we take to defend the rights of every person in Ghana, you know, subject to the public interest. So Having said that, what do you say to the parents of Ola Senior High School who were this year informed by the head teacher of the school at a meeting, which was very public, where they recovered it? Uh, and she, she said she had called the parents in and said their children are being actively recruited into the society of homosexuals by activists. What do you say to those parents? Well, I think that those parents have a duty to counsel their children. My position is that homosexual activities is a matter of culture and values. It is not a matter of law. It is quite another thing where an adult homosexual is preying on a child. It's, that is a different matter. Just as it's quite another thing when an adult heterosexual is preying on a child. Those things, a child has no right of consent and therefore it's a violation. So whether it is heterosexual or homosexual, it is an offense. And so we are saying that if you look in the, at the Criminal Offenses Act, and you think that the Criminal Offenses Act is not very clear about homosexuals or gays, you know, preying on kids. What you do is to amend the, that provision of the Criminal Offenses uh, what, uh, Act to make it clear that those prohibitions apply to homosexuals and lesbians. So where it is, and, and, and that is my answer to this. If people are preying on 
children or people not of age, and you are passing a law criminalizing such act, it is correct because under the current criminal law, mm. if you defile a child, it's a, it's a criminal offense. And my point I'm making is that if the provisions of the law do not appear clear enough as to cover a, a homosexual defiling a child, we should by all means protect the child. But where two adults, two adults have agreed, grown-ups, that they want to have that relationship, uh, we are saying that society has no business going and criminalizing that. The state should not do that. Because, let me, mm. because the state, it will be improper, I'm sure everybody will agree, although this is in the commandment, you shall not commit adultery. It's in, the, in, the, in our 10 commandments. Um, you shall not... Um, fornicate. Fornicate. Those are major, these are called the sins of flesh. Mm. So they are... Among Christian communities, these are highly strong values. Mm. But is anybody suggesting that we should pass a law to criminalize adultery? You know? No, nobody is saying that. So I'm saying that there's a certain hypocrisy about this law. We are talking about Christian values, family values, and so on. Adultery is a greater threat mm. to the family as a unit than the homosexuals. <laughs> In fact, I do not see how the homosexual community, that tiny thing is a threat to, uh, how do you call it, the family as a unit. So we should be careful about importing imp important religious values, which may be valid within their space of religion, into the law of a state in a republic which is secular. Because, yes, Christians play an important role in our society. So do Muslims, and so do our traditional authorities. But that granted, it doesn't mean that they should force the state to make their sectarian beliefs a matter of law. Because the Constitution forbids that. The Constitution says that there's freedom of religion. Everybody can have the religion of his choice. But the state cannot come up and put an official stamp that this religion is the religion of the state. No. Your, your position and the position of the 18 others is an affront on Ghanaian values and culture. Well, hold on. You can see that. This is, this, is, this is an onslaught, an attack on Ghanaian values and culture. No, it is not. What our position is, is that we are calling on Ghanaians to interrogate from an objective viewpoint, which is not easy, some of the presumed premises of our values. Yeah, but values are values. No. Our values, the, no. there's no single culture no. in Ghana, no. no single religion that accepts homosexuality. No, you're, no, saying, no. you're saying that we, we, should, we should forget about those values and, mm. and simply go along with the homosexual agenda. No, um, that's not what I'm saying. Please listen to me carefully. What I'm saying is that the values that Ghanaians have, if making them law, would infringe on the rights guaranteed under the Constitution. Those values are not permitted. And I, I, I refer to you to Article 26, which is very specific. All customary practices which dehumanize or are injurious to the physical or mental well-being of a person are prohibited. Many of our customary practices are based on our customary values. So I'm saying that yeah, but that is why we are arresting people for female genital mutilation. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. But, but what we are talking about is criminalizing an act that society says we, no. we abhor. No, you see, female genital mutilation. 
It's not the same. The two are not. Yeah, so don't, don't be. I'm, I'm saying, I'm allowing, allowing homosexual, homosexuality. Mm. It's not the same as what you suggest, that um, because there are cultural practices that are injurious, mm. Mm. you're almost putting the same at the same level, that outlawing homosexuality is injurious to the few homosexuals. Yes, of course it is. In what sense exactly? Because, it, it, because, because their being homosexual is an existential identity, you see? Again, uh, but what about what about the, the preference there? The important thing is uh, you, you, you the, earlier you chose to go with those who claim they were this is genetic, they were born with it. But their science also suggests that people make clear choices, a preference to be homosexuals. You're saying that is also okay. So you want the law to now go about looking for who are born as that? But but that is no 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 no. Please let me finish. Mm. You want the law to go into the ridiculous, you know, set that you determine whether you were born that way or it's a, an, a preference. You, when we have, you know, hundreds of thousands of, 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 of children or, or young uh, teenagers who give birth and the law is not able to handle that. You want the law to spend its time That is why the framers of this bill haven't done it. That is why they've done a categorical definition of what, what they are, what they are outlawing is and say it can't happen and in, the, in a society that has values that abhor it. No, but... You, you, I mean, you, 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 one breath you say, this is not an affront, an assault to our values, but it is. No, no, because no, if no. Because if you, if, you, if you are promoting our values, no, no, I'm then not... you, cannot, you cannot be saying no. you, you can't outlaw it. No, I think you, you misunderstand me. Yeah. One, I am not saying that this bill is an affront to our values. I'm, I'm, no, the, no, I'm not yes, saying that. That's yes. not the question. Mike. Your, your, your position is you accept that it's a Ghanaian value to abhor homosexuals. Yes. Yes. So that's, that's my fundamental question. Yes, to you. I, that what, but, but you say that in spite of that abhorrence, mm. don't do anything about it. Yes. L li live with them. Yes. And, and th that is an affront to the value that you say you, you are acknowledged no. right now. Let, let me explain why. First of all, people are free to have any values they wish. They are free. So the majority are free to have values that abhor homosexual practice. I would consider that unfortunate, but it is within their right. Freedom of thought, you know. So if, if that is what you think. But this goes beyond, this is culture. This no, no, is yeah, yes. Yes, this but, is our very being as yes, a people, yes, as but, Ghanaian. Yes, yes, but culture comes with thought. It's not something up in the air. You're, you're born. No, no, no. Culture you're is born into it. Culture, you are born into it, but there's a process of acculturation. Socialization. Yes. yes. So that process you affects the mind and thinking. That is what. But that I mean. is the reality. Yes. So, so I'm saying that of the Ghanaian existence. Yes. So. As a result of their cultural beliefs, they have certain thoughts about homosexuals, which they are entitled to. But you can't say that on the basis of that, you criminalize homosexual thoughts. Because homosexual thoughts will lead to homosexual practices. So if you want to really stop homosexual practices, as this bill does. In fact, it is indirectly seeking to criminalize even the expression of ideas in support of homosexual practices. That is my thing. And I'm saying that it thereby is an in implied contravention of the freedom of thought and conscience guaranteed under the Constitution. Mm. I want to take a quick break. When I return, so. What next? They've submitted a memorandum to Parliament. Is it a realistic um, uh, move to expect that Parliament, the members of Parliament, will dare, as I've just shown the numbers, go against the majority view out there in the communities in which they're supposed to represent? Um, I'll get his thoughts on that. I mean, what, what practical steps are they taking to get the rest of society 93% of who say they are intolerant to homosexuals, at least to hear them.
stay with me. Hello, my name is Evans Mensah and you can relive all the fun and excitement on Top Story, News Night and of course Ghana Connect via podcast. All you need to do is to log on to my joy online slash podcast. Set for your favorite show and relive the moment. Joy 99.7 FM, your radio for discerning listeners. And thank you, Arsene, for staying with us. A very, uh, really interesting conversation around... We're hearing the other side. The other side uh, to the conversation surrounding the bill that would, of course, the anti-LGBTQ uh, bill, uh, the, 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 the opposition. Uh, what is your view? You've heard a, a bit of the questioning on, on that. Uh, I still have with me to your lawyer, uh, Akuto Ampao. Of course, he's a member of the, of the uh, coalition, and the coalition that had come together, of course, uh, to promote uh, fundamental human rights and, and raise questions about the bill that is currently before Parliament. So, Ms. Ampao, so you accept that on this matter, you are in a minority, and, and fair to say that you are swimming heavily against the public opinion here. How do you... Is this an exercise in futility that you started in, in submitting the memorandum? To, how, do you, how do you plan to, to cross this hurdle? Let, let me give you. In getting your views heard. Let, let me give you an, a historical example. Somewhere in the eighties, mm. when the PNDC regime had effectively silenced all voice in our society, mm. a few of us were still ready to risk, you know, our liberty and whatever goes along with it to begin at the expense of our liberty and lives, campaigning for a return to constitutional rule. And eventually that led to the formation of Movement for Freedom of Justice and all of that. So I'm saying that the, the, the duty of a patriot or of the intellectual, is not to f just follow the majority. That is a total abdication of duty. But this is not just a this is, uh, this is a very emotive please, 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 subject. On. Let me, let, I'm making the, a general point of mm. principle that, in fact, it is precisely because it is emotive, which would suggest that reason is playing a very little or very small part in these positions and manifestations, mm. that it is the duty of leaders to take out their emotions and look at the issues from the viewpoint of the provisions of the Constitution. And remember that before you become an MP, you have to swear two oaths. And both those oaths require you to say you do right to all manner of, that's the speaker's oath, that he will do right to all manner of persons in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution. And the oath of MPs is that they'll fully and conscientiously discharge their duties and they shall, they swear that they shall observe, protect, preserve, and defend the constitution of the republic. That is, that is their, their oath that they swear. It is only when they swear that oath that they become members of parliament. Irrespective of the fact that their constituencies have elected them, they have to swear this oath of fidelity to the constitution of Ghana. So what we are saying is that we are urging members of parliament on this occasion to note the views of their constituencies and this, this so-called overwhelming majority. But when they are deciding this matter, exercising their function to pass the law, they must be faithful of their oath of defending, protecting, 
So they, they should disregard the, the views of no, your No, no, no. So they must look at what the constituents, it's, it's not, the, what the constituents are saying. Doesn't they, matter. They, they hear it. But they, they should disregard it. No, they have to take it into consideration. But when, from looking at the provisions of the constitution, what the, the constituents are asking them to do conflicts with this constitution. So they should disregard their constituents? They, no, they should enforce the provisions of the constitution. In disregard of the view no, of the No, they should enforce. If, if you, by enforcing... But, but doing one is in opposition to the other. No, but I'm it's saying, as simple as that. No, no, no. You see, it is not that they want to disregard what the people are saying, but they have a primary obligation to protect and defend the constitution. Uh, that, that, that obligation, actually, all of us share, mm -hmm. but... You have faith that members no, of parliament can do this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, but these are very important things. But because of failure of the elite in Ghana, because in my view, if we are serious about this 1992 constitution, from primary, they must find the most simple ways of introducing a few ideas of rights to the kids. When they get to the GSS, they will up, mm. you know. Because we are ending, are you, you have a, a plan to meet the religious community? No, we The will, traditional community? We, I mean, we would seek to engage everybody on this matter because we believe that these are matters that relate to our constitution. And therefore, when people are making proposals, they must be paying attention to the constitutional provisions and not simply the belief systems of their group. Mm. Because the belief systems of their group are not necessarily binding on Ghanaian society as a whole under this constitution. Thank you very much for joining me on PMS Press. I Thank wish you. you well in this endeavor. Enjoy the rest of your day.